What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Champion Living Podcast, the only podcast crossed the lines between the sport of rodeo and fitness. Today's episode, we are talking about raising future rodeo athletes, how to set your get up for success the best that you can in rodeo. First off, we got to thank our sponsors who this episode is brought by. Beastmaster Rodeo, been with us since the beginning. They are revolutionizing the rodeo gear game in the world. Check them out, beastmasterrodeo.com. <laughs> Discount code championliving24. Going to save you 10% at checkout. Uh, we just had a client, a listener of the show, just release a uh, – or just share a testimony about the boots he got from there. Uh, used to ride bulls, doesn't ride bulls anymore. Guy also – he was uh, – he worked in Western stores forever. I've known, known him forever. And so he's kind of a boot snob. And he texted me yesterday and he said, dude – you know how I am about cowboy boots, and these things are dope. They did such a good job with them. So check them out if you guys are looking for a new pair of boots. You don't even have to be a, a rough stock rider just to, to wear them. They're just badass cowboy boots. Check them out, and they've got all kinds of other things going on. Uh, anyways, dudes, how are we doing? Logan, are, Logan just – are you – sick everybody's still sick or what's going on you know we're i mean we're 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 okay i think we have been sick for a month there's been something going on at our house for uh ever since i came back from murray so it's been rough canon uh went to the doctor yesterday and he does have flu b so he's that not um he's not like <clears throat> yeah he's not running a fever but he's just like he's every he's like had a headache and he says his legs hurt a little bit and so anyway so he's been home um pretty much all week he's doing school oh i'll have to send you guys a picture he's doing school with sis yeah like he feels like you know i mean he feels okay he's not super symptomatic but we kept him home just in case so he's doing school with sis this morning i go in there just a minute ago and lacy has got him you know working on practicing his spelling or whatever and so what's he writing he's literally writing yeah, over and over again jv mooney J, J. J. B. Mooney. J. B. Mooney. He's got JB Mooney at the top and he's like trying to practice like writing JB. Anyway, it was pretty funny. So um, but other than that, if him and if him and Jagger ever got together, the world would burn down. I think that I think it like, would. He, it would he, just be too much cowboy in one yeah, spot. He got to play with Ern Bob uh, Corson's boy the other day uh, at Tupelo. Yeah. Er, Ernie was there, and of course his family was, and um, and they had their inflatable bull and stuff. And of course, Cannon had his inflatable horse and his whole rig and bag and stuff. And so they got to run around and play cowboy a little bit. Um, so anyway, but yeah, they. So he's just uh, he's been practicing his writing. Other than other than Cannon feeling a little sickly, uh, I mean we're we're good. It's just it's just uh yeah, it's just just that time of year. I think you know, like it's January. Speak for yourself, been, man. We've been, <laughs> we've been, don't we've been, I don't want any of that. Yeah, don't put that evil on me. Yeah, yeah well, I'm just saying, like, I, I, the, we we got to, th oh, like, yesterday we were racking our brains, like, what is going on? Like, it, is there, like, do we need to check our house for mold? Like, what's just up? You know what I'm saying? Everything. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just, um, I mean, it's, it's dead of winter over here and the kids are, in, you know, in school. Off. So back and forth and back and forth. And it's, uh, oh, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's inevitable. Just rough. Yeah, it is. So anyway, other than that, everybody's uh, on the up and up. Today's the first day that I, so far, knocking on some wood somewhere, today's the first day that like actually things look somewhat normal in my day, in my life between dentist appointments and doctor's appointments. And one thing for the first day in like weeks in which I have a, I have a two and a half hour block this afternoon to finally be able to shoot demo videos and do some stuff nice. so, anyway so about time i'm glad yeah I'm, but you're telling me yeah, i'm glad it's kind of like sitting i'm, I'm <laughs> glad my doing? i'm glad my i'm glad it's dude you guys you guys can say all you want to but you know that it bothers the fire we will <laughs> when i cannot be on a when i cannot be on a uh on a like a routine and so i'm i'm uh, i'm glad that it's finally getting finally hope maybe who knows i don't want to jinx it I hope that we're getting settled in. I don't have any trips coming up for a little bit. So here we go. I'm getting consistent at the gym. It's been good. A little sore. Yeah. Like how to start digging, some steroids. Digging. Yeah. All the steroids. Yeah. Oh, steroids. speaking of steroids. Did you guys, did you guys see the, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm going to, I'm butchering it, but um, he's like one of the co-founders of, of PayPal or something like he's, he's a billionaire. And oh he's starting, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah he's starting like an yeah, Olympic like tournament PDs. with yeah for like undrug testing. Are allowed, so like yes. you yeah, so people can take whatever 
PEDs they want to take. Well, it's going to be nuts. That's pretty much professional it's, rodeo. Well, yeah, without I mean, that. yeah, except nobody no does it. rodeo takes PEDs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't need to. They don't even train. Yeah, but uh, no, that's that's insane. That's that's insane. When it's going to be when sick. are these? When are these supposed to take place? I don't it know. I'd have they're to try. And, it. Yeah, it, it's like uh, kind of just came out. Yeah, I just saw it, and he said he was going to be. They'll be releasing some dates in the future here coming up. But that's going to be neat because you're going to see some really, really cool things get done from an athletic standpoint, but also at the same sense. Yeah, you're going to see that. Man, everyone thinks that PEDs are steroids. Well, there's or like- the, you're going to guarantee to be this freak. Mm, mm. And it just isn't the truth. Even if you take those, you still have to work your absolute ass off to get the results and recover. Right. And you have to do everything. They aren't a cheat in that sense. Right. But they are going to make you recover better. They're going to make your muscles grow faster. Yeah. And here's the, the, the flip side of it. Is it like the danger of using PEDs too? Like exactly. The the use is probably I mean the use is already rampant but like it's probably going to increase because now people are going to be like oh well now I can still do athletic things that I want to do and be enhanced mm-hmm. like sign me up and so I think it's going to increase the usage um, you're going to see it, not in the the right way like you're not going to see people I think it's going to be brought into a clinical setting more I think it's going to be brought I would into hope so because athletes of that level in general even if so if they have to be an Olympic level athlete first of all to be competing in something like that, even on PEDs. So high hmm. caliber, high caliber athlete. they already probably have a big training team behind them, a big strength and conditioning team. So they probably have testing blood tests, all those things happening. Yeah. I know for a fact that a lot of these quote unquote steroids, anabolic steroids are used in medicinal settings in really, really low doses for certain things. So mm-hmm. they have laboratory made versions of these that are the highest quality. If that started happening, which is the way it should be done, they should be going under a lot of blood panels can, can constantly a lot testing of supervision. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Liver, kidneys, all of those, the function of all that, because they are, those things are hard on the body. But yeah. Yeah. if that happens, I think it'll be quote unquote, as safe as it can be. <laughs> And, yep. and then the bottom line is no sport safe, right? We talk about sport in general. No, yeah. of, it's not healthy. Yeah. Like look at bodybuilding. Holy shit. You know, that, that is healthy, but they are the most pristine physiques on the world, but it took unhealthy mm-hmm. amount of things to do to get there. Um, but it's going to be interesting I'm, and I am personally excited to watch it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see the comparisons. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's similar, obviously it sounds like there's going to be very similar, if not all the like Olympics events. Like I would be really interested to see the comparisons between like the actual Olympics. Right. And then like this, uh, and then this, you know, um, uh, whatever you want to use the supplemented Olympics, right. To enhanced, see the differences uh, enhanced, enhanced games is what they're yeah, calling enhan- it. Yeah. the enhanced games to see the differences like in times and performance, right. They like this. Call it the like, natty kind of games. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, according so to the sports illustrated article it sounds like they're gonna have um track and field swimming weightlifting gymnastics and combat sports hmm. combat sports it, like tactical not... or like jujitsu probably like jujitsu <laughs> i was gonna say well that that's that would be cool but you start putting contact like football or anything like that in the game i yeah. think you run oh, into yeah. potential uh liability issues just because the amount of yeah, yeah. force that could potentially be created the, yeah, on the the, like, i mean yeah. the collisions in the nfl are already Alone enough with, like yeah, yeah you, and granted i'm sure some of those guys are on some shit <laughs> yeah the, yeah i mean jujitsu like dude can you imagine which i mean i don't know like i don't know what i don't know what regulations like regular jujitsu tournaments and stuff already have in place if there's like you know, regulations for um, drug use and whatnot there already. But I don't like, think there's a lot because there, there's definitely guys that are openly, yeah, like op- like open. They say out, you know, on social media that they use and stuff, and they're I, like, I just think about guys like the only thing that I'm like I can really compare it to is Matt Hooks, one of our coaches, Matt Hooks. He sent me like a whole like five minute film of like him rolling with this guy. Do you want to talk about brutal? 
Like that Bro. sport is absolutely freaking brutal. There is n- like, man, just the, the endurance that it takes to be able to do that. And the, and toughness, the strength and you have to be man, tough. like, dude, it is, it was nuts. So then I think about like a bunch of dudes on, on PEDs doing it like, Oh, scary. Yeah. Is what that now is. they'll all have boners while they're doing it. <laughs> it's like that's the fencing games you know what i'm saying that's the very variation of fencing they're gonna have at the enhanced Olympics. oh my <laughs> gosh i hope right, not um that's okay. wild though matt if yeah i've known matt for such a long time and he is the best olympic weightlifting coach i've ever met in my life so to see him transition and make this jump into something really really different has been cool but also <clears throat> If you know Matt for any amount of time, dude, I met him when I was training for competitive CrossFit. And so he would jump in on these workouts with me every now and then. And he had zero anaerobic or aerobic capacity, like, and would die and mentally just could not get himself to calm down. So I know the amount of work that he's had to put into Mm -hmm. this and to be able to, to get good at it is really cool to watch. And it's... And for anyone that's, I, I think it's a really cool sport. I think it teaches you so much more than just how to be fit. It teaches you mm. how to be a, a good, strong individual, like a human. Yeah. I've thought so about trying to get it, find a box around here, at uh, whatever they call a place where you do that. I've been trying to find one around here to get the kids involved in. Like, I think it would be great mm-hmm. for, for youth just to teach them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, some, like, I mean, just, the, just number respect. one self-defense right but then like also just the work ethic that it takes and um you know it's a little non-traditional not like every kid plays t-ball which is fine which is good they're gonna play t-ball too we actually just yeah they could still do that yeah which will be yeah which will be great they won't my kids won't even know what end to hold the bat at you know what i'm saying like they've never (laughs) even seen videos so yeah it should be interesting um but uh i'm sure they'll be picking flowers in the outfield but but they're right so yeah, Cutler will, but he's got a little bit of time. Callan, I'm not so sure. Um, Cannon's probably gonna probably gonna eat. Oh, Callan is who I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, dude. yeah. Cal, Cal, I don't know if Callan's gonna enjoy it or not. But we'll see. But I, just having them involved in some stuff like that, but like jujitsu would be a great thing where they can actually get some. Um, they can do that. Yeah, they could. They could. Yeah, get, I mean, they're gonna wrestle anyway. Yeah, like, my kids are already doing it twenty four seven. Yes, like if they had a little structure behind it. Yep. It'd yep. be awesome. Yeah, I completely <laughs> make for agree. For some good watching at home. <laughs> yeah, it would definitely make for some good. Yeah. yeah, I would be I would have to start though. The problem is that if I got them in it, then I yeah, would have to start because by the time exactly they get to 14 and they could just freaking like take my legs out from underneath of me and freaking pin me down in like 10 seconds, that's a problem. We can't have that. Yeah. Uh, so now I've got to start too. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think it would be good for I think it'd be good for the kids just for all the things that it teaches you. But I think it's good for kids to be involved in a lot of different sports, you know, not absolutely, not absolutely. just one. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Well, we see it all the time. And even growing up, I played a lot of different sports. I don't know. Logan, did you play a lot of sports growing up? No. Yeah, can you believe it? No, I did not. <laughs> I played freshman football and we lost every single game and I was responsible for probably 80% of the touchdown scores against us. That was as that that's as close as I got to youth sports right there. Fair enough. That's fair yeah, enough. Makes but sense. It's all coming together Paul, now. Paul played some sports and when we were he was growing up and we all probably saw friends, kids that we grew up with that at an early age specialized in a sport Mm. or, you know, we're Mm. heavily involved. That's what their whole life consisted of. Mm -hmm. Uh, You look down the road, six, seven years, they are nowhere near that sport Mm. anymore. They are burnout. They hate it. It's too much pressure for a young kid to have to specialize in a young, in a sport. And it's not like scientifically, it's not, it's been proven that it is not good for development Mm. of, of athletic ability in kids to specialize in one single thing, getting them variety is the best yep. thing. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. like anything else. So that's a perfect segue. Let's chat about rodeo a little bit and how, you know, parents can help their kids that want to be involved in the sport. What can they do? What can they get them involved in? Should they only do rodeo? Should they do other things? 
how do you mix and match? And it's hard for me to talk about this in a with examples because I ain't got no kids, but you guys got all the kids. So mm-hmm. I definitely want to hear, you know, Logan's been doing junior rodeo. You've taken um, your cannon to mutton busting. Like you guys have, have started this and both are previous professional rodeo athletes. So I know deep down inside, if they wanted, it would be awesome if they followed in the footsteps, but I don't feel like you guys are going to be the ones to be pushing them towards it and saying, you have to do this because I did it right. You want them to fall in love with the mm-hmm. sport if that's what they choose, but also giving them opportunities to see and do other things is really important, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what, something I learned last year was like, you know, the, like establishing like a positive mindset early on, because, um, when we tried mutton busting, we, we have, he's been, my cannon's been doing it. I think t- he was two the first time we got on one, but it was like, you know, we're leading the sheep around, you know, it's a great, like, it's a good experience. It's safe. I'm holding on to the back of his vest or whatever. Like, and then it, it maybe was three to six months before he had another opportunity to do it again. And so last year was when we first like, we're like, okay, we're buying, we're buying the membership. Like we're going, like we're doing all the rodeos and we got like two in and he gets wrecked out and he says, you know, I don't, I don't like this anymore. And you know, I'm, I don't blame him. <laughs> like it's, he had bet on maybe ha- like less than a dozen and he, and he, you know, gets stepped on by one and that's not fun. Um, but like having the positive mindset. So I, I made it kind of a deal with him. Like, you know, like, Hey, we're not going to quit in the middle of this because we already, we already established that we're going to do it. I said, we're, we're not, we're not going to quit on a bad day. So like, let's have a good day. And then if you still don't want to do it on a good day, then that's fine. So we go to a couple more. He, he has like one where he's ex- super excited about, he like gets off. He said, dad, that was my best ride ever. And I said, okay, do you still want to go to the next rodeo? And he said, no, I think I'm good. I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. We can, we can quit mm. on a good day. If you still don't want this, then that like, I'm okay with your decision here. I said, but we have to do other sports. Like we're not going to just, we're, we're, we're going to be involved in mm. different sports. And so T-ball was coming up. And so that was a perfect segue into into his t-ball season um after t-ball season wrapped up we got him into gymnastics and we've been doing gymnastics since and now uh t-ball is about to kick off here again in a couple weeks so like that's kind of my game plan and and it's not necessarily that i want him in sports all year round his entire life like you know as he's growing and developing but right now gymnastics is one day a week t-ball was like one or two days a week kind of just depending because like at his age group he's not going like there's not a lot of practices. It's just more or less, let's show up. Let's have a good time. Let's learn to love the game first before we, you know, super like get super into it. And so I think that's that at his age group. That's a really important part is being in something all the time with low volume. Um, as kids get a little bit older, that's, you know, probably going to change. They need to be in multiple sports still. Like, as we know, like they for their development they need to be in multiple sports but um starting them off on like having good positive relationships with the sports that they're in i think is the a good starting place mm-hmm. yeah mindset's everything man when you set them up and give them the secret to success when keeping everything between the ears focused and calm and able to adapt through times of adversity, which is what sports does for kids at a young age, which is why I love sports Mm. and have always loved sports, man. I love playing them when I was a kid. I still love playing them, love coaching them now, but you're teaching them how to, to deal with adversity at a young age and Mm -hmm. focus on things they can, can control because they're going to learn from a young age. You don't always win, but you can always win by learning something. And that's a really, really important thing to take away. And, you know, that's what builds character. So that's cool, man. I really like that. What do you guys I think? Go ahead. Go ahead, Logan. I was just going to say, I mean, it really like all of what you guys have just said summarizes kind of that growth mindset. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which is what it builds in them is this growth mindset and not being fixed. Well, I'm just no good at that. Right. Like you, you could have let Cannon be done after kind of getting stepped on and and then be limited probably would have started to develop this like fixed mindset Mm -hmm. around like i'm just not good at that and so Mm -hmm. i'm not going to but instead it was like no we got to kind of push through this and he had the best one ever and Mm -hmm. it's like okay if you still want to be done you can be done but we are not being done because you're not good at it we're being done because you don't want to anymore 
a real life example of this, of if you did do that and what Cannon would look like when he was 19 years old. I was at a clinic the other day. We were doing mental toughness. 30 minute plank. 30 minute plank is freaking hard, right? Mm. But it is totally doable, especially by at like college aged athletes that are that are competing. You should be able to get through this, not on a regular basis, not every day, not every week, like once a year, test this as a team and build each other up and get through it. This one athlete quit and they said, I said, what are you doing? And they said, oh, you just got to know when to you know, when your limits, what your limits are sometimes. And I was sit there, I said, someone let you quit as a kid. Your parents were not, mm -hmm. didn't make you keep going, you know, and that's evident because that's the thing that got started at an early age, probably for them mm -hmm. was it's okay. You'll just do the next thing. You don't have to do that if you mm -hmm. don't want it. And that's exactly well, if that's how right. you learn how to be your entire life. That's what you expect. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you and don't win. Anytime anything. you get to a, anytime you get to a brick wall, you just turn around, right? You know, or you get to any kind of obstacle, you're just like, oh, this is the end. Instead of like trying to find a way, you know, is this the best way? Can how can I get through this? How can I get over it? How can I have a growth mindset? Right? How can I learn from this? How can I, yeah, embrace I the suck a little bit? Yep, yep. Learning that's how to do that at a young age is very important because that's that's how you win at anything. And life is not all rainbows and fucking unicorn mm. you know it's not you're True. gonna have to go through some suck at some point in time and how you think 100 is going to determine of how you interpret those times yeah you know i used to think a lot of things were hard now as i've changed how i think about things there are opportunities to overcome adversity there are opportunities to be better at something like for instance my garage i didn't want to do any of that I have no idea what the hell I'm doing, hanging walls and insulating <laughs> things, literally been on YouTube, just figuring it out. And I hate to, I've had to rip this wall down twice because I can't keep the place warm enough. So all my boards keep warping. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so I just wanted to quit, mm. but that's not what I do. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? It's going to feel way better when I get this thing up there and it looks all good. And I'm like, oh, I did that. You and, know? and it's, and it's something that you'll carry with you for the rest of your exactly. life. Exactly. This experience is like, it's, it's something that you'll have no matter if, where you move, Ground if you move someplace or yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. You'll have those skills and that abilities because like, instead of, instead of, uh, hiring somebody else or just not doing it because you were scared of it. You freaking push through what you learned and yeah. you, and you'll carry it. And it's this same thing with same thing with kids. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, I think they're, I don't know if it's their default, but like, I, at least I've, I've noticed with Cannon and he's my first, he's the oldest. So like, you know, we're kind of getting into all this with him, you know, this every, every time we have an experience with him, it's, it's pretty like, it's new to us as parents. Um, but like he, he'll want to, when things get hard, he wants to quit mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. Um, but we don't let him. So like, you know, a silly example would be like drawing. He's like, Oh, I can't draw this. I can't draw this. I'm like, yes, you can. Like, and then I would draw something and he'd be like, well, how did you do that? And I said, I just never quit. Like I just kept learning. Like I kept doing it. I kept practicing. Mm -hmm. And then now he'll draw something and it's like, Holy crap. Like I can actually tell what, what that, that is. is. Like yeah. you're actually drawing really well now. Um, but like same thing with his gymnastics, like, you know, he would have like a bad day at gymnastics or get in trouble for, for behavior stuff. Cause he's just, bouncing off the walls all the time and he'd be like i don't like this anymore i don't want to come back and i'm like well like too bad we're like we're, back. <laughs> we're gonna come back and now he's at the top of his class in his gymnastics or his parkour mm -hmm. class so it's like that there's they'll they'll want to quit way before they they should and mm -hmm. so and i think we're i think we're as adults the same way like mm -hmm. our, our mind will start worse. our mind will give in way before we we, we should give in um yeah. or at least like you know way before our body's ready to that's exactly right. But we don't have somebody there. We don't have somebody uh, very, uh, uh, unless you're very lucky and surrounded with a great group of like friends or, or, uh, coworkers or whatever. We just, or a spouse, maybe partner or whatever. We don't have people around us that are like, Hey, don't stop. Like you've got to keep hammering, mm -hmm. keep going, you know? And so uh, how many times do we give up on something when we were literally right around the corner from mm -hmm. what we were looking for, you know, like rodeo careers, <laughs> Like that's, that's something that I've like come to the realization of is that I just, I laid down and rolled over. I have no regrets and I don't, but like the fact of the matter is, is I just rolled over way too soon. I should, like, I should have just embraced the suck more 
than I already mm -hmm. had and just kept going. And there's uh, how many other examples of things in, you know, in our lives and, and the fact that, you know, uh, if we just kept pushing. And so it, I completely agree. And you, you said something a minute ago, Paul, about can't. And one of the things that we've tried, I'm not super consistent with it as consistent as I need to be, but we've, we've tried to like get the kids to like, we don't use that word. Yeah. Like anytime yeah, they come in and they're us. like, and they're like, you know, uh, Callan, it might be even something as simple as putting toothpaste on your toothbrush. Right. And they're like, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'm like, dude, uh, uh, don't say that. That's potty talk. We don't, we don't say the word can't you're having a hard time with it. You're struggling. You need help with it. All of those are acceptable, but we don't use the word yep. can't because the fact of the matter is, is that you can, you just don't know how, or you're struggling with it and we'll get there. And I, what I like my hope long-term is that if we can continue to reinforce that and we can be consistent with like, they will understand that even though it's difficult now, it won't be difficult in the future if you continue to to go. So I think that's yeah, super that's important exactly too. Right. We do the same thing and, and, you know, just trying to change that, that word can't to like something else, you know, yep. like you said, uh, you know, Hey, I, I need help. Like yep. I'm, I need a little help with this. Um, I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I feel like the way direction this conversation has gone, this Buckle is up. the perfect time to insert it. I went down the rabbit hole of researching a bunch of, uh, mental toughness research papers the other day. Um, I probably spent way too much time reading them, but the, it came down to like mental toughness is is about 50 percent genetic and so like your confidence and your and your your risk orientation oh, yeah. or challenge we've talked about on mental toughness episode before the four mm. c's so confidence and challenge those are a little bit more genetic like you're probably going to be more genetically predis or predisposed to have that or not to have that but the things that you can learn the things that are not influenced by your genetics are your control so like your emotional control and your commitment so like your goal orientation or your achievement orientation. So everything that we've talked yeah. about up until this point that we said, like, we're not going to let our kids fall back on have been in the, the emotional control and the goal orientation category. Mm. So like if we were to let them stop, you know, when they say they want to stop or, or let them say can't, like those are the things that they're going to learn and that's going to keep going as mm -hmm. they get older. At the same time, those are the things that, they don't have to be stuck with as adults. Like mm -hmm. they can learn it now and they can keep building on it now. Yeah. That's awesome. So cool. And that's great advice too. Um, just work out with your, do your ki kids work out with you? Like you uh -huh. resist yeah. training, doing anything like that? Yeah, a little bit from time to time. They're, they're not, um, it, it's kind of like one of those things that for, at least for me, like if they want to, and they're in the, like they're in the mood to then like, man, and, and I'm going to work out here in the garage, like, come on. And, uh, and Conley, I love like Conley's um, on this like travel gymnastics team. This is our first year. And so we're just kind of waiting our, our, our toes here. We're just figuring out if this is something that she's really enjoying so far. She seems to be, but she saw me writing out my workout for the day and I I'm kind of old school. So a lot of times if I'm just winging it, I'm going to write it out on paper before I go into the gym. And so, um, and so then she went and got a, a piece of paper. This is completely uncoached. And she started, we have a beam, um, it's, it, we have a beam out here in the, in the garage that she can pull out and she completely uncoached went and wrote out like, you know, she was going to do, uh, 20, uh, duck walks. And then she was going to do 20, like, um, you know, pogo jumps and 20 this, and then she was going to do 10 laps on her bike for conditioning, all of this completely uncoached. She like wrote out all of these things, this plan. And so, yeah, I've like started kind of bringing her out here. Um, and if I can get her by herself, it's a circus when all three or four of them are out here, but if I can get her and or cannon by himself out here, they'll stay hooked up and they'll want to do some stuff. And, uh, really the training though, for, for us, it, it looks at this stage. I mean, they're four and seven Cannon mm -hmm. and, and Cannon's my rodeo guy, Conley's, you know, gymnastics. It looks extremely sport specific, right? There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of just, we're just figuring out our balance and we're figuring out a little bit of coordination. Um, you know, we might do some, you know, some basic, you know, goblet squats or something like that. But for the most part, they're just playing. We're just playing in the gym and we are learning how to jump off of things and land. We're learning how to, you know, roll. We're learning how to, um, you know, navigate the beam, those kind of things. And a lot of this stuff, like for Cannon, when he was like really, really into riding sheep, we were actually for practice, we were using our pony. 
and we put the bull rope on the pony and I'd lunge it around in a circle. So a lot of the training and stuff is extremely specific to what they're wanting to do at that mm -hmm. time. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily look like, at least for my kids, it's, it's not a... Um, it's not a comprehensive resistance training program at seven years old for, you know, gymnastics as much as it yeah. is like, let's just go do your sport, like go do your sport in a controlled environment where you can practice it a little bit here in the garage. I can coach you or not that I know what I'm doing, but I can try to encourage you and I can try to help you. And if you want some um, other stuff to go along with that, we can do that. She hopped on my assault bike the other day and she's working on her conditioning and she's just, of course, her pedals can't, re your feet can't reach the yeah. pedals. So she's just yeah. like, and one arm can't really reach. So she sends one and then catches it, you know, and then sends one and then yeah. catches the other. And, um, and so that's kind of what it looks like is it, I want to, and I want to, I want to it to be effective, but I want it to be wrapped in play, so mm -hmm. that it's fun, because yep. that's how that's how they can build a, a lifetime of fitness because they mm -hmm. enjoy it, not because Dad was a strength and conditioning coach and he made me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's how they get to away from the gym later in life. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my as, kids, I, I pretty much just turn them loose in here. Yeah, uh, sorry, Doug, but no, you're um, good. like I'll just I just turn my kids loose. You know, like they're like they they'll watch me do something and then they'll mimic it. Mm -hmm. And so it's it looks a little bit more like a CrossFit gym in here, <laughs> a bunch of bodies running around, lifting uh, <laughs> PVC pipes overhead and doing box jumps and stuff, but uh, throwing kettlebells. But the I mean they just mimic it, mm -hmm. and so yeah. like they'll do that as long as their attention span will allow them, and then six know, minutes they're on to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's better than nothing. Yeah, you're dang better right. Better than nothing. Yeah. And they do that every day with you. They learn a lot from it. So I think mm -hmm. that's really cool. I would just say as as they get older, if anyone listening, as your kids are getting older, keep exposing them to different kinds of training. You know, cross training, mm -hmm. keeping them. It needs to be different. It needs to be keep them guessing and keep them uh, learning and, and not getting bored because – we know as fitness keeps going, as we get older, you do tend to do a lot of the same things over and over and over to get better at them. And so mm -hmm. there is time for the, the repetitiveness and quote unquote monotony of that kind of training. But for me, I, I love it no matter what we're doing, just because we're moving and feeling good. But I would say doing that and then also emphasizing rest times in between sets as they start being able to put together actual reps and, and actually express those kinds of, uh, you know, types of training it's important because mm -hmm. that's only going to help them reiterate. Like I don't get hurt. If I rest this long between sets, it's going to help me perform better, et cetera, et cetera. That way we have the good standards built up. We get to high school. We're in the weight room, not to talk shit on high school weight room coaches, but we all know how that goes <laughs> and you can, they will know what to do. You know, yeah. they will know how to do everything, and get the most out of that. But, uh, last thing I want to talk about was not categorizing performance as the end all be all with your kid mm. you know mm -hmm. the well-being of of them and and how they feel about life and the sport and just how things went and what they can work on is way more important what do you guys do with that mental and emotional well-being along with physical fitness with your kids um we kind of just like i just talk to them about it so like gymnastics is the most prevalent one because they each go one day a week right now um and so after their their practice is over, well, they'll come sit by me in like the parent seating area and I'll just ask them about it. Like, okay, like how did, like, did you have fun? First of all, like, that's the first question. Did you have fun today? Like, yes or no. Um, like, what did you enjoy most? Like, what did you feel like you did really good at? And then they'll, they might tell me something and then I'm like, okay, what do you want to work on better next time? And then whatever their answer is. I'm like, cool. okay, that's, that sounds pretty cool. Like glad you had fun fist bump. And then we head out the door. Um, so that's really kind of all it is, is just kind of like, I help wrap up this session, like, so that there's no un, no unspoken like feelings mm. or anything left on the floor. Like, let's get it out now. How did we feel about everything that just happened? Is there anything we need to work on? Okay, cool. Like, then let's go have fun. It's time, time to go home and eat dinner or whatever. But um, yeah, I think that's the big thing is just because like, I, I never really, ha I think a lot of my struggles in sports growing up were just because like, I didn't know how to communicate it or I didn't really know what I was like mm. looking to get out of it. And so uh, it was a lot of just uh, not really goal oriented, I would say. 
like just throwing stuff at the wall and you know try and figure out what you're good at um but if i would had been a little bit more goal oriented or a little bit more in tune with like you know how each sport made me feel or how, like whether i really enjoyed it or or whatever i might have had better experiences as a kid mm. oh that's good stuff man that's really good stuff i like something my uh my in-laws, my brother and sister-in-law have two kids and their oldest is five. And so he's just starting school and being out of the house and, and learning things. And I don't know about you guys, but every time I got home from school as a kid, my mom would ask, you know, what'd you learn today? And I could hardly think mm-hmm. of anything, right? I don't know. Mm-hmm. A lot. We've learned a lot. Uh, they started asking him, what was his favorite thing that he learned for the day? And it's mm-hmm. funny they kind of tested, you know, what the difference in the responses and, you know, as to be expected, what did you learn? Lots. What was your favorite learn detail? You know, he could tell you in detail mm. what the favorite thing he did for that day. Um, so it's all about how you ask the questions and, and preface them and man, shit, not even with just kids with, with anybody, just the way you talk to people, um, yeah. you start thinking about no. the responses that you really want and about the question you're really asking it, it really changes maybe your point of view and how you're looking at things. So yeah, that's really good yeah. information. I love that. Yeah. What do you the, got, uh, the, no, the last thing that I have to say about like well being versus performance or and performance, however you want to put it is like, it is extremely important. And there are a lot of parents out here that need to hear this. You cannot live through your child's mm. activities. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I ne- every year, man, I go to junior rodeos, I go to open rodeos, I go to all these. And it's one thing to be a supportive dad. Um, but, you know, like when you're making decisions for your 16 year old on getting on bulls and you're hauling him to rodeos and you can clearly see that the boy does not want to get on. But his dad's hauled him and paying his fees. And like, man, you cannot live vicariously through your children. I want my sons, man, I want them to rodeo so bad I can taste it. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, man, I want them to have that passion for what I have a passion for. And I want to be able to, because I know I can guide them there, Mm -hmm. right? Like I can help them and they could be so much farther ahead than I was because of the experience that I have. But at the end of the day, like the, what's more important to me is that they they love what they do, whatever that might be. It might be mm-hmm. tennis or golf or baseball or they or or nothing, right? But they're going to get exposed to all those sports, and then I'm going to do the best I can to sit my ass down, right? To like to not not preach at the at the coaches, to not like you know really overemphasize my involvement and dragging them to do things that they don't want to do. Um, Mm -hmm. because I want to see my kids succeed because we all want to have badass kids at the end of the day, we all want, we can all feel that the pride of having a, uh, uh, you know, JB Mooney's boy, right? Like we want to have badass kids. And so, but at the end of the day, like, man, their long-term mental health, like, man, you're doing irreversible damage. Mm -hmm when Mm -hmm. you try to live vicariously through their achievements and you force them into things. So, um, how you do that? I don't know. I'll tell you if I ever figure it out (laughs) (laughs) day day by day over here, but, uh, that's man, it's so important. Well, I think the questions you guys ask your kids is a good start. You know, I, uh, yeah, I don't remember getting asked that ever growing up. And again, it was a different time then, you know, but Mm -hmm. that just wasn't a conversation, you know, good job or you didn't do good and you go practice more. And that was about it. So it's cool <laughs> to be able to have those conversations, you know, but I think that's really important and is important for all the parents out there to hear. And uh, I had a, I think it, I think it was a younger kid or it was a parent off of his account asked me what a proper age for guys to start riding bucking horses was. And I thought that was a really, really good question because mm. we see a lot of, differentiation in how that is answered in today's world. And this is solely my opinion. Uh, This is how I feel about it. But riding bucking horses requires an immense amount of skill and proper practice on the fundamentals, repetitive practice. You have to be able to do the thing correctly over and over and over to get better at it. Secondly, you need to have a controlled environment when you get introduced introduced to getting on live action or getting on the actual real bucking horses, right? Um, when we start talking about ponies and little horses, 
first of all, the horse in general, how the horse moves is 100% different than a full grown bucking horse. So what we're getting these kids good at is hanging on for dear life to something that is running and darting left and right as fast as it physically can. And so we create immensely bad habits when it comes to rodeo and riding bucking horses. And on top of that, at those ages, they are not even close to fully developed. Even better, most of these kids are 12 to 14 years old. And for boys, that is the peak point in which they are growing. Mm. So Mm. growth plates are wide open. Their body is changing every week. So their coordination, their balance, how they're doing things is different. They're having to adapt to literally a new body every week or every month. And then if we get injured, because we're in this stage of life, it could be really detrimental to your development of your body. Yeah. Can confirm. Can yes. confirm. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, Paul's got one leg shorter than the other. You know what I mean? Like yeah. literally because of a similar thing. So you, you, we don't think about those things. We think, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You get bucked off and, you know, scraped up, not no big deal. Well, if you want him to do this when it's a real thing, in actual rodeo as an adult or as a, you know, a young man, I wouldn't do this. I would get them horseback. I would get them involved in rodeo some other way in any other events, steer dog and shoot dog. And they need to be a horseman. If they could learn how to ride a horse Mm. and can feel a horse and now know how a horse acts, reacts, how to read the animal, you are going to be such a better bareback Mm. and saddle bronc rider than you would not mm. doing those things and just working out alone. Right. So go get involved and yeah, in go play other sports. Yeah. Go do learn other how stuff. to sprint, learn how to learn how to jump, learn how to do yeah. all of that stuff as you're and get really good at it. There's no yep. mistake that some of the best athletes in rodeo and bucking horse riding did not start until college. And they were mm-hmm. very high level athletes in high school yes. and they mm-hmm. rose to the top very quickly. That's not a mistake. There's no. a, there's a secret sauce there. Yes. No. I mean, Caden Rocker right now is the perfect Caden. examples of that. Yep. Yep. And Rocker, see, at a young age, did wasn't even involved in rodeo, man. He was a wakeboarder. Mm-hmm. He did. He played football. He did all these other things. He was an athlete. He's a world champion wakeboarder at the age of nine or ten. He knew how to control his body. He was extremely strong for his age. Combine that with the control that they put into introducing him to the sport of bareback riding and controlled it for years going up to there. Yeah. It's no surprise that it's worked out the way it has, you know, and he does what he does. And Cade, same way. Never really rodeoed, played college baseball, extremely freaking athletic, had a really good foundation in the weight room, knew how his body moved. Take that learning or that skill and take that to bareback riding. He masters that because he knows how to master a skill already from baseball. Wham, bam, three years Mm -hmm. he's at the NFR, and he's not just there. He's kicking ass and getting better and better. So it's – uh. It's the, the proof's in the pudding, man. It's right there in front of you. It's right there in front of everybody. And, uh, everyone just wants to think their kid is different and that's fair. I think that's a fair, fair thought for the most part, but that's just not the truth of it, you know? So get out there, try new sports, do different things, become an athlete, learn how to ride horses, be a cowboy. You want to be ride bareback horses or Bronx 15, 16 is a great time to start getting introduced to that as long as you've been doing all of those things leading up to there. If you're sitting mm-hmm. here 15, 16, never been around rodeo, want to start, start, go ride horses, mm-hmm. go start doing some workout specific, some event specific workouts, getting stronger in that learning how to ride the spur board, master that spur board. I want you to be able to absolutely demolish that thing before you ever think about going to get on a horse. And then once you have that down, you are going to get so much more from those opportunities that you get to go to schools and learn. You're going to take away so much more because you're not having to think about a million things that you're being coached and told to do. If you've already been progressively learning those things throughout the way. Um, there's lots of resources you guys can check out online. Uh, check out Devin Riley, Tomahawk Traditions on YouTube. He has a mm-hmm. bunch of videos about bareback riding, how to pull riggins, how to set up riggins, how to build the spur board. I know Logan has that. That's going to be coming up soon. Um, I have, well, I have, I have a, I have a how to build a spur board, but I want to give Devin a shout out. I did that school at the beginning of January mm-hmm. and I had a parent uh, and a son come to me with a brand new riggin. They have n- neither one rodeoed, had no yep. idea what they were doing. They mm-hmm. set the glove up and they put a shelf in the riggin 
and it looked absolutely fantastic. And I said, who set yeah. this up for you? They said, well, we did. I said, have you ever done it before? They said, no, but we watched some YouTube video on how to set up a rig. <laughs> and I said, from Devin Riley? And they were like, I think so, Tomahawk, something or other. Yeah. I was like, man, that is cool. And yeah. so mm -hmm. it's working. If Devin's listening or if anybody out there doesn't know, go to that page tomahawk traditions i think like you said you like those videos are fantastic they are very professional this is not just somebody's opinion that you know oh, i never made the nfr he doesn't know what he's doing this is somebody that like i mean he's giving you fantastic Bird killer b for 93 points he's ranked yeah, um sure. yeah shout out dev always killing it we also i did an episode with devin uh, a little bit back a couple months back you guys can go back and check out if you want to hear a bit more about what he does he's got a really cool podcast um yeah check him out but that's my two cents on uh on bareback and saddle bronc riding bucking horses a solid age to start and hopefully anybody listening took away some helpful tips about how to help your kids excel in sports and rodeo uh, as they as they grow throughout adolescence into adulthood so um Guys, to close this out. As always, got to thank our sponsors, Huey. Man, have you seen? Yeah, you guys haven't seen it yet. Their new, their spring stuff, summer stuff is going to be so dope. Uh, check them out. Get your Huey.com. Use our discount code Champion Living, all one word. Going to save you ten percent on all their gear. And Colorado Craft Beef. I don't know if you guys have been watching my story, but I made that my my routine snack for the afternoon. Quick, quick hit of protein and such a good tasting treat oh they're so good check out their beef sticks check out their beef packages man 20 to 21 days dry age beef no nothing put in them it is all natural american cattle baby right. check them out coloradocraftbeef.com good good one logan that was a perfect sound effect <laughs> coloradocraftbeef.com use our discount code champion living all one word not case sensitive gonna save you 10 percent on all of their stuff guys until next time we'll catch you later